what was it about the bed and like anyways the but the surrounded by strong characters one's needs will be met if one is carried away by a momentum of others one's behavior may be diminished so there you could see the idea of being influenced by someone to have an affair or something like you can see that so it being there the wasted wasted words one expression one expresses favoritism and loses credibility self self-centered influence will alienate others and encourage gossip so this is these are three takes for that individual degree and they kind of have the same inner warrior concern but it's not expressed as cryptically as the metaphor the metaphors in the, in the traditional I Ching book are really valid in oriental context if you're familiar with that you can really work with them and see them in context but you have to get past the concept that the superior man does this and everyone aligns to the superior man or aligns to the government and it's just there the 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 emperor is the correct like so we don't have that so it's it's this is written a little differently it ends up being a little more almost more buddhist it doesn't have that confucian superior man element to it okay um the technical consideration for that line solid and even place inappropriate action firmness at the wrong time okay so that's basically the difference between the two Ichings. now there is an i have an astrology an astral Ching program and again this is something gives is given out to free for people that finish the grade the level seven exams and are going on to this 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 is the program i hope to work with the charts right now it's just a program that was finished in the 90s and converted to the visual basics so it's just um it functions reasonably well up to windows 10 but even there some things some functions are lost from it so it needs to be redone it isn't but this still works so it gives the planetary positions of of your chart your ascendant your house cusps your planets and it gives all the hexagrams that are, and the hexagrams on the three levels associated so it calculates it all so um and then at the same time it gives the geocentric the heliocentric and the right ascension charts so this is right ascension chart is really useful because remember we'll be talking a bit about this next week too when we talk on the stars but remember when we saw how the degrees of the zodiac are not exactly the same as the, the alignment of the degrees to the houses and how if you have something near the ascendant or descendant it may look like it's above the horizon it may not be it may look like it's in the first house but it's in the 12th it may look like it's in the 12th it's in the first it depends on the latitude or the declination of these planets so when you have this chart form yet you can see the heliocentric positions which is more your higher energy without the houses you can see the na the geocentric our normal house positions and you can see the right ascension before it so in this case we've seen carl jung's chart his son was in the seventh house in our horoscope but really if you're looking at the horizons at, at the time it had not yet risen it's actually if you look at this right ascension chart you see it's in house six it just implies you can check double check the houses and it'll tell you whether it's in the seventh where it's actually risen or not by degrees it would be so but in actual fact it hadn't quite risen and the sun it's really a little more in the six is in the six was not above the horizon really interesting but having this information you have it all in one page you don't have to go look for it it's easy to find it so uh, those of you who are studying and don't have the, have the program um you can make a request and order it um there is a thing where you can order the I Ching study guide which would include this um at the iastro at the iastrostore.com but um the these things will be um just depends on what level you're at and where you go if you've passed the exams and if you haven't you're not going to have it you'll just you'll have to work with with the um tables that i gave you this just organizes it very nicely so i'm going to take a moment to explain this okay so at the top it gives you your birth data information the page carl young his birth date then at the first row here it gives the, the house cusps house 10 house 11 house 12 house 1 2 3 across just gives the six but then below it it gives the midheaven 29 16 scorpio the scorpio thir hexagon 35 line one broken line this is minus the pentanus pisces hexagon 13 line five solid line plus the sub pentanus pisces hexagon 37 line three is plus so it gives it for the midheaven gives it for the ascendant and below it for the ic and for the descendant so it gives the four angles the actual hexagrams 
<clears throat> then just at the top of each section, see heliocentric, geocentric, right ascension. It tells you this, we're working with, this has the geocentric, shows the position. Okay, so it puts the positions of the planets here. So I'm just going to go further a bit. Just showing you the tables as we went. So you can order this, but it's, it's just orders opening nicely. Um, there it shows the, the, the hexagrams for the midheaven or for the ascendant. There's always three. Like the main theme, the sign, the pentam, the subpentam, the hexagram, the subhexagram, the sub subhexagram. The main theme, the special focus, the intimate detail. And it may seem like the intimate detail is too too fine to me, but actually I found that often it's like the nerve that really hits the center of all the other things, and you really see it in the in the progressions as they come along. Which this is all preparation for the progressions. Here you'll see. Each of the planets are put down here. The planets and the degrees they're in, the signs they're in, whether the retrograde or not, are put in this first call, first two columns. The side that shows the latitude, then it shows you what house it's in, then it shows you the, the sign it's in and the hexagrams, then the pentan it's in, and then the hexagrams it's in, then the subpentan it's in. So, so if you, it has them all here. Yeah, it's a bit of a closer look. But just so you get used to thinking the pentans and the hexagrams, they parallel each other. They just get added on all three levels. It's enough at first just to, in your natal chart, it's enough to see the first hexagram of that line. It's only if that connects and you want to go further, there's a place that you can go further. It just takes a bit more time. And then there's two pages that include the aspects. All the aspects. So with the aspects, yeah, there's two pages of that because there's a lot of information on the aspects. So we'll just come down here. Here we go. So here is the aspects for the sun. They read across the page. So the sun in house seven, second line, it says the sun, hexagram one, hexagram two, hexagram three, levels of hexagrams for each aspect. So it gives a degree of aspects in the first level, it tells you whether it's an action, it fits within the orb of an aspect, semi square, square. What's the aspects around it? Then it gives you the first hexagram, second hexagram, third hexagram. There's three, any circle that gets divided into these pentans and into hexagrams. So the aspect circles have that, and every hexagram will have every aspect. There's always a rela relationship between each two planets, and there's going to be these three hexagrams that elaborate it. And the hexagrams with the aspect, it tells you when there's stress factors involved with it. The other thing you'll notice is that in Mercury, yeah, I've highlighted the conjunction here. You see three degrees, 44 minutes to conjunction. Apply A, it's applying, it's getting close. It's 344 moving closer. And hexagram 24, line 4, 62, line 5, 46. But when you look at from, this is Mercury to Venus. If you look from Venus to Mercury, if you look from the other side of the aspect, it's 3 and 44 degrees. But it's a conjunction, but it's separating because it's one's moving towards it, the other one's moving away from it. So, Normally, you use the fastest planet to see whether it's applying or separating. But when you get to progressions, you're using each planet in its own, and they can be applying or separating. So here, every planet can be applying or separating in its own movements. So here, there's a difference. The hexagrams are different for the aspect of the conjunction, whether you're looking from the Mercury or you're looking from the Venus. So here's Venus to Jupiter and Jupiter to Venus. The, the degree and the aspect is the same. One is applying, one separating, but the hexagrams are different. So this is the unique, this is, it's just really detailed. You're not going to get into studying all the hexagrams, but this is, a, then this is the, this is the astrology program that I have. It takes all the Ching, it takes all the points that are accentuated from natal chart, the three levels, all the aspects, the three levels from the angles and totals them all up together and gives you a, a, um, a, a sheet showing your DNA or your combinations of all the hexagrams accentuated from everything. So this is the Ching study guide. And I'm just going to come down. I'm just taking a few minutes to explain this because it's quite an incredible thing. And if I can get this, this is the program I want to get made into an app so it's available to all the RASA students. Um, or it's part becomes part of the study program. Down the left hand side, you'll see each sign of the zodiac put down in its eight sections. Capricorn to the middle of Aquarius, Aquarius to the middle of Pisces, just like, and beside it is the number of the hexagram. So you immediately have a code for what the hexagram is, the number of it. On the far side, you see the hexagram numbers are again. 
you see the actual hexagram written out on its side, sitting on its side, dash and bokeh. You know, it's a, it just was able to do this. And then and then the name of it, turning point, is put in for the six, each six degrees it is of the signs. So this gives you the, the degree to the hexagram correspondence. Then, okay, so then the, this, on the first level, what happens as the hexagrams are totaled, all the level one hexagrams, the first level, the main theme hexagrams are totaled here. And how many times each line is accentuated is counted. How many times the first line, second line, third line on the first level on the main theme comes through. Then the second level hexagram, it does it again, totals how many points on the second level, how many lines were accentuated, how many times. Like in this case, it was zero, zero in the second level for hexagram 24. Zero in the first line, zero in the first, one in the third line, two in the fourth line, one in the fifth line, zero in the sixth. So if you're reading this hexagram, even if you're just throwing the hexagram, you have a pre-established relationship that puts more emphasis on one line than the other and the teachings from that to you. Then the third level is done as well. Then these three levels are all totaled up. So they're used, and then it's totaled up on this other side, you see. On these three levels, one, four, three, they total up to eight. And eight, equals 0 0.016 of the total. So that's 1.6% 1, 1. that accentuation, that one line of the hexagram. So it gives you a, a total of it. And then it tells you uh, by adding them all together, the first line was once, the second line was zero, second line, third line was once, fourth line four times, fifth line once, sixth lines once in this hexagram. It gives the degree of name. So this is what's on this sheet. It's like a, a total measurement of the light and darkness in your whole horoscope. Or your DNA. Then this showing first level, second level, third level again. And in the totals, you'll see the totals A plus B and the percentage. It's put as a decimal point. So 0 0.018 would be 1.8 percent. You know, like there's one point zero two one would be 2.1 percent. Two point, yeah, 2.1 percent. Now, the, hex, the points are accentuated here, the hexagram names are on the right, and the, the numbers are on the right, the hexagrams are and the name. Now, beside on them, as you look down this column, you're going to see some big M's and some small M's. There might be just be two, there might be a few. It's the maximum and minimum. So this is a maximum for Carl Jung. 14 points out of all the hexagram accentuations in this chart, 14 points were in the hexagram of decrease. Um, that theme decrease will be predominant in his life. It'll be one of the most predominant things in life, how he's decreased, how he's in different situations like that. Now, go further, you'll see there's another big M beside this hexagram, hexagram nine, which is the taming power of the small. That's 14 points again. And then there's another big M down at the bottom under progress, 35 progress. But then there's some small M's, which are the minimums, the ones you have least accentuated. Deliverance, arousing out of the bitch, that's his least disturbing one, or least accentuated one, and gathering together. So the part of him, even though he had these insights, he really was a certain amount of a loner, not wanting to be together. So this is something you work on forever. But really, when you're looking at it, you can see all the three added up to the hexagrams, the point totals. So this is what I call the I Ching study guide. And just the last page here is showing you, like here in this maximum for decrease, line one was four times, line two was two times, line three had no accentuations, but line four had five accentuations and five, two, six, one. So line five is gonna be the most predominant in that hexagram, anytime you, throw, anytime you run into the hexagram, that line is gonna be the outstanding one. That's the one his son was in, and the other planets would be in it too. But line three would be almost not accentuated. So it's a really textural measurement into the I Ching. It gives you statistical data of planets, energies into the lines of the hexagrams that can be studied and accumulated, and research could be done. This program also has the ability to add five charts together and put all the hexagrams together. You can put a whole family member together, or you can put a whole office or a business group together, boom, and they total up, and you can still get this percentage of where these lines are. It's very useful in that way.